Okay, good morning to everyone. In the previous class, we were discussing about uh, uh, the BOD problems. So in that, uh, um, we have discussed uh, what is BOD exerted and uh, what is uh, BOD uh, remaining. The two aspects we have already studied uh, with respect to this figure. So uh, then we have solved uh, uh, two major problems also. So how exactly uh, the relationship is there between the BOD remaining and BOD exerted and how to uh, make the temperature corrections um, in case of uh, BOD remaining and BOD exerted if it is uh, other than 20 degree centigrade. So then uh, other than uh, uh, we have discussed BOD and we have discussed the BOD problems also. So other than that, uh, which are the other uh, things are there to measure the organic matter that is present in organic matter. Matter. We already uh, did that BOD is one. Uh, technique to measure the strength of the organic matter. Other than that, we have one more called COD is there and uh, total organic carbon and theoretical oxygen uh, demand. That is uh, THOD. Normally, we can call it as THOD. Then, what exactly the difference between BOD and COD? BOD will always target on the biodegradable part. Biodegradable. biodegradable organic matter but when it comes to COD it is both biodegradable biodegradable and and non biodegradable both it will calculate so that is why always the COD value of any sample is always greater than BOD value because your oxygen chemical oxygen demand is considering both biodegradable as well as non biodegradable organic matter so of course uh, uh, it is never be greater than uh, uh, the BOD is never be greater than COD. Even the most of the standards, um, the receiving water bodies, if they any wastewater, wastewater, if they are releasing into any uh, river body, river body, river body. If you if you determine the, the COD as well as uh, the BOD value. COD and BOD value. So normally, uh, the BOD be uh, never be uh, greater than COD. Always the COD will be higher than BOD. And the norms, the norms, what it will say is that it is 30 milligram per liter for BOD and 250 milligram per liter for COD. So these are the norms are there. Even if you see the norms also, it is lesser compared to your COD. The always uh, BOD by COD ratio, uh, it will vary from 0.5 to 0.9 always. Means it depends on the kind of characteristics of wastewater which they are releasing from the industries. So then uh, the COD is uh, is an equivalent of organic matter. It is determined by the same measuring the dissolved oxygen used during the chemical oxidation of organic matter in three hours. This is very important. There in uh, BOD, that is biochemical oxidation. Bio, biochemical oxidation. 
COD is only chemical oxidation. Chemical oxidation. But normally it requires minimum three days. Minimum three days up to you can go with 20 days. But the COD it can be completed within three hours. So this is a more advantage than this. But you, it will come in combined, both biodegradable as well as uh, non-biodegradable organic matter. But this one is only restricted to uh, biodegradable organic matter. And even uh, this, with help of that also, we can go with organic or, or inorganic. Organic or inorganic. That way also it will go. So uh, this is regarding the chemical oxygen demand. Then one more uh, uh, experiment or the test which we are going to conduct uh, for to determine the strength of any of the pollutants or pollutions in the rivers. Then total organic carbon also determined uh, to check how much extent of pollution is there, just like COD and BOD. TOC also can be calculated. So this method measures the organic carbon existing in the wastewater by injecting the sample of wastewater in a special device. That is normally special device means normally we'll use TOC analyzer. That is TOC analyzer we will use it. Um, to find out how much carbon is there in that. For example, take an example of C6, H12, O6, that is glucose. Uh, suppose if I measured, uh, this one is the glucose. Uh, if I measured the BOD value of this, I may get uh, something around, assume that uh, if I'm taking one gram of this, if I'm taking that, assume that I'm getting around uh, 500, milligram per liter of BOD. Same if I determined, maybe I may get 1000 COD. I may get uh, uh, COD if I measure it. COD if I measure it. If I measure it. For example, if I'm getting this one, so COD might, might be uh, 1000 milligram per liter. Assume that. Thousand milligram per liter if I determine. The same if I determine with the, the TOC, it will calculate the only the carbon content that is present in uh, that uh, solution just like this many other compounds will be there only based on the carbon content we are going to find out that whether how much extent of pollution is there normally uh, for most of the pesticides we will use uh, for example pesticides so these are all consist of carbon in their structures uh, suppose if i want to find out the uh, how much extent of pollution is there for the pesticides so I have to always use uh, the TOC only. Most of the time, if you determine the COD value of this, uh, uh, for example, one uh, milligram per liter of uh, pesticide, if you take COD, roughly you'll get it around 50 milligram per liter. But it is below the norms only. What the norms really says that I already said that it is the norms is 250 milligram per liter. But I am getting 50, but uh, we are not supposed to determine uh, the uh, toxicity of uh, this pesticide based on the COD value. Always we have to decide it on the TOC value itself because even one milligram per liter of any pesticide is more toxic uh, than uh, any other things. Always we have to determine in terms of the TOC value only. So then uh, this we are going to conduct it in a TOC analyzer. Uh, then it is used to quantify the amount of organic matter in the wastewater. 
the method is only used for small concentration of organic matter that i already said that the small concentration of the cod value then comes to the theoretical oxygen demand uh, so it is uh, using the formula uh, we are not going to conduct any experiment here with the help of the, some of the formulas and some of the equations we are going to find out uh, how much oxygen is required uh, with theoretical way so if the chemical form of the organic matter is existing in the waste water is known the thought may be easily calcul calculated this is very important the theoretical oxygen demand can be calculated only uh, if the existing waste water that form or the compound if you know then only it is uh, we can make it otherwise it is uh, not uh, um, possible to calculate the theoretical oxygen demand we have to write that formula just like uh, for example uh, c6h12 o6 plus how much oxidation is required then what exactly plus uh, um, normally it will give the carbon dioxide then some of the water like that it will give so based on the equations we are going to calculate how much oxygen is required to oxidize this then of course it is releasing um, carbon dioxide and water so in uh, most of the some of the cases it is required uh, next class we will continue thank you the remaining part will continue in the next class